Released in 1982, Castle Grayskull is widely considered the most iconic and recognizable playset of the 1980s. Visually striking and imposing, it ignited the imagination of many kids in the 1980s, resulting in hours of creative play, the spark of which continues to this day, where Castle Grayskull continues to be the cornerstone of the Masters of the Universe brand. dubbed Fortress of Mystery and Power, on the front of a box adorned with moody and evocative art by Rudy Obero, Castle Grayskull's origins extend back to 1975, before the Motu line had even started at Mattel. The earliest sketch by Mark Taylor isn't radically different than the final playset that would arrive on toy shelves in 1982, but the differences are significant and noteworthy. Another design from 1979 is closer to the Castle Grayskull we all know and love, but still has notable differences. The first sculpted prototype is closer to the commercially available Castle Grayskull, but there are still many differences. Many of these elements would be part of the castle as portrayed in the earliest mini-comics and cross-sell art. It is worth noting that some of these features that did not make the final toy were cut for cost reasons. Despite its central importance to the story of Masters of the Universe, Castle Grayskull exists primarily as a MacGuffin, an object or device that serves merely as a trigger for the plot, and in this case for imaginative play. It featured prominently in the first two mini-comics of the Vintage line, where its actual origins were kept mysterious and open-ended. <coughs> Tila was declared the guardian of Grayskull in these stories, which would mirror the role the sorceress would eventually play once Filmation made adjustments to the story and the world of Eternia. It was suggested that as the guardian of Grayskull, she would marry the eventual king of Grayskull. A rather outmoded plot point by today's standards, but one that saw early stories focusing on Skeletor attempting to kidnap Tila and forcing her to marry him, and setting up a destined for each other relationship between Tila and He-Man, whom the story heavily implied was meant to be the King of Grayskull. The concept of He-Man and Tila as a romantic couple has endured beyond these early roots, and the shifts in Tila's role in relation to Grayskull has thankfully moved to a place where Skeletor isn't constantly trying to kidnap Tila for gross reasons. <coughs> Dovetailing with these early mini-comics was the original licensing kit, released by Mattel in February of 1982. Very little information on the actual history of Castle Grayskull was provided. This material merely reinforced the various play patterns Castle Grayskull introduced into the line. More involved was the backstory presented in the 1982 Story Bible by Michael Halperin, dated December 1st, 1982. The history as presented here would be adapted in the Kid Stuff read-along storybook, Castle Grayskull, that was released in 1983. While there are notable differences between this Grayskull as originally presented, many of these elements would carry over into the Filmation Story Bible of 1983 and the Filmation series itself. The most notable difference is that in the 1982 story bible, Zodak is the main instigator of the Hall of Wisdom transforming into Grayskull. In the Kid Stuff book, this is primarily instigated by the free-wandering Eternian goddess version of the Sorceress, who appeals to a stuffy group of Eternian elders to protect the secrets of Castle Grayskull from Skeletor. None of these elders look anything like Zodak. The 1983 Kid Stuff record for Castle Grayskull is 16 pages long, counting the introduction page, and follows the formula of many of the read-along books Kid Stuff produced for many licensed properties in the early 1980s. Either by record or by cassette tape, the listener would follow the story and there would be a chime to let you know it was time to turn the page. Some of these Kid Stuff books would feature full color art or photographs, depending on the property. But the first three mini records for the Masters of the Universe brand 
featured black and white illustrations. The Castle Grayskull story featured no actual dialogue and was mostly exposition to explain Castle Grayskull. Read by an unnamed in the text narrator, it was prone to be a dramatic style that wouldn't be out of place in the type of radio programs that had once been quite popular with audiences before television had taken over as a primary method of entertainment. It's in that spirit that I've gotten a narrator to read the story using a rather dramatic vocal style, not at all out of place for one of these kid stuff records, and I've colored the pages to make the whole affair a little bit more colorful. I did retain the sound that denotes it's time to turn the page. Retro Toy Princess presents a dramatic reading of 1983's Castle Grayskull by Kid Stuff Records. This is your Masters of the Universe read-along book. Every time you hear this sound, it means it's time to turn the page in your storybook. Now we are ready to begin our adventure. Open your book and we will start the story of Castle Grayskull. And remember, when you hear the sound, turn the page. Silhouetted against the dark sky, deep within the evergreen forest of the planet Eternia, stands Castle Grayskull, fortress of power and mystery. The huge stone structure looms large and frightening on the bleak hillside. A colossal skull glares down. Its black eyes stare silently out on the lonely terrain. Its lower jaw, ringed by sharp stone teeth, hangs open as a drawbridge entrance into the frightening castle. Only the brave, or the foolhardy, enter willingly into Castle Grayskull. Castle Grayskull has not always existed in its present form. Many, many centuries ago, it was the Hall of Wisdom, a beautiful building which glistened and glowed with the light of a million stars. The Hall of Wisdom was the center of Eternian culture and a storehouse of all knowledge in the universe. Within its glittering walls met the Council of Elders. One day, a vision appeared to the Council of Elders. Out of a shimmering beam of white light stepped a beautiful woman, dressed in snake-shaped armor and carrying a stalk with the head of a snake at the top. She warned the council that there was trouble ahead. She foretold that one day the forces of evil, led by the wicked Skeletor, would try to gain control of the planet. But there was hope. To protect the planet, a defender would arise, a being so strong and powerful that no matter how hard the forces of evil tried, they could not overcome him. His name would be He-Man. In order to defeat the evil, He-Man would need help. In a blinding flash, the Council of Elders compressed all their strength and knowledge into a single ball of magical power. But there was a problem. If Skeletor and his evil helpers found this orb of power, they could gain control of the entire planet, and perhaps the whole of the universe. The Hall of Wisdom must be changed from a place of beauty to a building so frightening that no one, except the bravest of souls, would ever dare enter. Thus, in a flash of blinding light, the very matter which made up the Hall of Wisdom was transformed. As the atoms shifted, the hall changed into a dark and frightening castle with a skull face. This was the beginning of Castle Grayskull. All of this happened centuries ago. In time, the trees of evergreen forest grew up around the stone castle. Twisted, thorny vines wrapped around the dark towers. Castle Grayskull disappeared into myth and legend to wait for the time when the knowledge it contained would be needed to save the planet. And now that time has come. Prince Adam, son of King Rendor and Queen Marlena, has been taken by his lifelong friend and companion, Man-at-Arms, 
to Castle Greyskull for his meeting with Destiny. Once he holds in his hands the Sword of Power, he will be transformed into He-Man, the defender of the planet Eternia. It will take all the strength and courage he can manage to fight back the evil forces which strive to overtake the planet. His enemies are powerful and cunning. There is Evil Lin, the fearsome Beast Man, Triclops, and of course, the leader of the forces of darkness, Skeletor. Their battles will rage across the entire surface of the peaceful planet Eternia. From high in the mystic mountains, full of monsters and deadly dragons, to the thick evergreen forest, whose canopy of pines hides the planet's greatest secret, Castle Greyskull. The victory will not come fast or easy. Pitted against clever and wicked opponents, He-Man will have to use all of the knowledge left in his keeping by the Council of Elders so many centuries ago if he is to save his planet from the monstrous plan of domination by Skeletor. But when they will, He-Man and his good friends, Man-at-Arms, Tila, Manny-Faces, and Battlecat will fight with all their strength to prove once and for all, that they are truly masters of the universe. And with that, we end this episode of Retro Toy Princess. If you enjoyed this video, why not click the like? And if you would like to see more videos like this, you should subscribe and set the bell notifications. There will be more masters of the universe, as well as adoptions of the Good Stuff records. Also, there will be history and lore of all of my favorite toy lines from the 1970s, 80s, and 90s. Once again, I'm Allison Troy, Retro Toy Princess, and I'll see you in the next one.